Welcome to Needham School Spotlight. I'm Dan Gutekanst, Superintendent of Schools. I'm really happy today that the uh, high school administrative team is here to join us and talk about some of the challenges and opportunities at Needham High School this year. And first of all, uh, there, there are two uh, new administrators, uh, kind of new, uh, returning, uh, a returning player, but I want to welcome uh, Dr. Joe Barnes as the interim principal to Needham High School this year. First of all, thank you for stepping up uh, to fill in this role and uh, thanks for, for joining me this morning. And I want to welcome uh, Mr. Johnny Cole who is uh, joining us from Concord Carlisle High School where you, you taught for how many years, Johnny? Eight years there. Eight years. And he is uh, a new member of the administrative team joining uh, Ali Kubra Argentari and um, Aaron Seacott. Uh, so it's a, uh, it's a strong administrative team and, and uh, I'm just kind of excited to talk about what's going on at Needham High School this year and some of the, uh, some of the things going on. Maybe, uh, Joe, we can, we can begin with you. Um, we're into the third week of school. Uh, a lot going on so far. Uh, how's that been? What's, what's, been, what's been going on? It's been, it's been a good three weeks. Um, first part of the uh, month of September, we had our nearly 1,700 students arrive. They all had schedules. They all had a place to go where our hiring was virtually complete. The building looked great. Um, at this time, kids are into routines. They're um, doing what they should be doing. Teachers are amazing. Uh, I think we're quite impressed as a team, the, uh, the work that's being done already in the classrooms. Uh, we've had a couple of you know, bumps along the way. We had some facility issues with the heating and the cooling and trying to get some ventilation during the very hot time. But in general, uh, it's been a very smooth start. I'm enjoying my, my time with these very talented administrators. Oh, that's great. Yeah, we, uh, across the district last week during that little heat wave, experienced uh, lots, of, uh, lots of activity. So I, I really hope that's, that's behind us. Uh, it's uncomfortable when you have uh, 1,700 plus the adults, kids in the building trying to, to get around and, and uh, do some teaching and learning. Well, I must say that the, the, the show went on. Despite the yeah. heat in the classrooms, they didn't miss a, didn't miss a beat. It was yeah. great. Yeah. So, um, so what did you tell students when you when you first uh, met them in, in class meetings? I mean, you, how did you introduce yourself? How did how, how's that how's that been going? Um, it was interesting. Uh, I, I enjoyed it. This this is the kind of stuff that I've done before, and I really enjoy. I will say that um, we try to let them know that we come here every day. This is uh, what we love to do. Um, try to promote it as a, a family that. Um, we want to respect each other as you would at home, um, respect the building, respect the teachers, have that, that camaraderie, that uh, give and take that, that is based on respect and, and hard work. So, yeah, and I think that's... It was well received, I think. I didn't get any uh, mumbles or grumbles at all from good. anybody. Good, good. Yeah. Well, I, I think, I think I, frankly, I think students appreciate hearing up front what, what your expectations are and, and uh, how you are available to them. Uh, they want to hear that, need to hear that. It's, it sounds like uh, it sounds like they did. Uh, well, we can we'll get into more of that, but I, I want to turn it over to Johnny and and you know again welcome you. Uh, it's been week three for you in this new role. Uh, so what's that transition been like for you? What what maybe you can share a little bit about what your responsibilities are here and, and what classes uh, that you're responsible for and sure. just what the transition's been like. Sure, the transition's been wonderful. Uh, I've actually been on the job technically since July 1st, so I had the right. summer to, to get acclimated. I, I made sure at Aaron's suggestion to spend 20 minutes every day walking around the building so I didn't get lost when school started. Um, I am responsible for the junior class and the last third of the freshman class. And my interactions with the kids have been really great. They've been really, really great students. Even some of the difficult conversations we've already had to have around students arriving late or whatnot, small, small issues that have come up in the beginning of the year. Um, and it's just, it's been a great transition, I think. Uh, Joe's been really great having on board. It's been nice having someone else somewhat new to the school system, so, so that I have lots of questions that can help other people uh, in the transition as well. It's not just me being the new person, so right, that's right. helpful. So what are some, some uh, immediate similarities and differences that you're noticing between uh, uh, CC and, and, and NHS. Sure. Uh, it's, been, it, it's been a really interesting. I mean, first, it's, it's been a transition from a classroom teacher. I was an English teacher for 13 years, and this is my first administrative role. So I'm taking on a 
totally new perspective on education in, in this school leadership role. And I think the things that I've really liked about Needham, one of the things that attracted me to Needham in the first place were just all of the, the different programs that are available to support students in a variety of contexts. I think that uh, it's been really impressive the way in which students on all ends of the academic spectrum are, are supported here by various programming and, uh, and services that the staff and the community even really offer. Teaching and learning, that's our business, that's what we do, that's, that's, the, uh, that, that's, the, that's the work. Um, what are some of the, uh, and you've been working I know on um, uh, a variety of different uh, curriculum initiatives and, and teaching and learning initiatives, what are some of the uh, big opportunities ahead this year? What are some of the projects that we're still working on and, or have introduced this year? Yeah. So we, we're working on several things this year and have a number of initiatives and we actually talked on, in the first couple of days of school with the staff around our vision and, and kind of where we're headed this year. Um, and I think we, you know, we tried to create a visual with 21st century skills being in the middle and preparing all of our kids for success after high school um, and then branching out to all the different initiatives and, and goals that we have. Some are around technology and innovation. Um, some around uh, cultural proficiency and social emotional learning. Um, we have freshman and sophomore academies who are who are continuing to work on common instructional strategies, classroom management strategies, and and common assessments, and just building a common language around what students do every day. Um, and we finally we have a, an interdisciplinary learning team um, that I I actually uh, have been a part of for the past several years and and helped to chair the committee. Um, and what we are working on essentially is bringing all of the learning that we've gained over the past four years, um, which began with a, a large contribution from, from the NEF and resulted in the Greater Boston Project, which, which is our senior interdisciplinary course this year, um, running two sections and uh, with, with 86 students, so we're extremely excited about that. Um, so began there and has now branched out to include, started with three teachers, now over 20 are involved in interdisciplinary projects at the high school um, that were essentially funded by, by many grants from the NEF as well. What are some of those different, a couple of the different uh, projects they're working yeah. on? Um, so we have a, a studio physics course that is um, being kind of spearheaded by, by Mike Hirsch and several of the, um, the science teachers. Um, we have a continuation actually from last year, which is um, a kinetic sculpture class um, that combined kind of robotics and engineering with, um, with our fine arts, with our sculpture class. They actually carried that out in, in the Da Vinci workshop and you know, hopefully that will, that will continue this year. Um, there is a world history um, and art history unit that is in a freshman year, a freshman year um, world history class. Um, and there are, there are several other um, mini projects this year that are going to be launched either the middle part of this year um, or possibly actually um, continuing throughout the summer and into next year. The, the World History and Art History is a unit of instruction that will be for, for all the students. It's or for, is it piloted for some or? It's piloted for uh, two sections of okay. world history, uh, freshman world history. That's great. Um, yeah, so we're th that's a goal of, of the committee certainly is to make sure that we're offering experiences at every grade level and throughout all of the levels. Uh, it's great uh, that, that, I, that idea of bringing different disciplines together, breaking down the silos, if you will, of, of learning so that different uh, teachers um, who typically have been either isolated from other departments now can work together and, and create experiences for kids. The reality is we know the world isn't really broken down into these nice, neat, tidy departments. The world is, uh, is, is different. Everything is together. So to the, the degree that we can provide that kind of content and experience is, is awesome. And 86 mm -hmm. kids in the Greater Boston Project this year. Yeah. Wow. Well, it's a growing and an exciting program, and the Needham Education Foundation has been a huge partner with uh, with with the school with the uh, uh, with the school. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I want to uh, uh, mention the Greater Boston Project. I'm thinking about it. Started out with uh, well a lot of kids, and then last year I think maybe 30 students were involved, yep. and now it's it's more than doubled, almost tripled in in size. Uh, that requires space. 
And um, I know that one of the, the challenges at Needham High School is trying to, to find space for all these great programs you just described. Uh, and also just some of the regular, uh, you know, mundane uh, office operations and eating in the cafeteria and making sure you can get from point A to point B. Um, I know you've all been involved in trying to figure out some of those challenges. Aaron, I know that uh, you're, you're uh, helping take the lead on some of those building issues. Um, so someone's tuning in and they're meeting the <coughs> high school administration and we talk about their space needs at Needham High School, folks might scratch their head and say, well, we just opened Needham High School in 2008. How could there be space needs? So that's my question to you. How could yeah. there be space needs uh, in high school? Well, we're, we're fortunate to have a nice new building. I mean, really, it's in great structural shape. It offers a lot of opportunities for us. Um, its design was intended for about 1,450 students, which made sense about a decade ago. And at this point, we have over 200 students more than that. We're getting, we're in the 1680 range, getting close to 1,700. So we have a lot more students, a lot more staff who need to support those students as well. So. Despite having a relatively new building, we are getting tight, there's no doubt. And we have, uh, over the last few years, tried to be as creative as we can about repurposing some of the spaces so that we have more classrooms than the building was even originally intended for. We've had to create more offices to support some of the additional staff that we've had. Um, so we've just tried to carve out space as creatively as we can over the last few years. and. We're getting to the point where we might not have more space to be able to carve out. So I'm listening to this, and I uh, I know that principals often are have to make do mm -hmm. with the space they mm -hmm. have or the resources they have, and and uh, they do that with without it impacting students. And Ali, as you, you described some of the academic programs going on, there's a lot of exciting mm -hmm. stuff that's happening. I mean, this place is really is really cooking. Um, but over. Over time, how, how, how do these space challenges impact students? Um, or have you been able to mitigate any impact on students and so they don't even know uh, what's going on? I, I think our goal is to minimize the impact on students whenever possible with any issues that we have, whether space or anything else. And I, I think over the last few years, we've been really successful with that. Um, I don't think students would necessarily say that they've felt crowded. I think we've been able to maintain fairly um, appropriate class sizes because we've been able to create more classroom space. We haven't had to put more and more students in classes. Um, I do think that the, the numbers have gone up, though, uh, incrementally, but noticeably. Um, there's also been some increasing scenarios where students have had to make some hard choices around the classes they're taking because we haven't been able to offer more classes. Uh, we had a situation coming into this year where we had students who were interested in one science class in particular. We literally didn't have the space to create another section, even if we had the staffing for it. So. Uh, I, th we're at the point where the students are going to start to experience it more directly. I do think for years there's been an indirect experience, though, as, as teachers are moving between classes and classes. They aren't in stable locations to be able to easily be found and provide some support after school or before school. Um, teachers are needing to leave classes to move to other classes down the hall, which means they're not available to answer those kind of quick questions at the end of a period. or be as present as students are, are entering in to just check in with them. Hey, hey, Dan, how are you doing? You look a little bit off today. And, and just set a, a real positive atmosphere at the start of each class. That's not able to happen as consistently as we'd like just because of the movement between teachers. Well, and I understand that there are many, um, many teachers who I don't know what the statistics are for this year. Mm -hmm. I'm sure we'll sort through that after the year has really you know, uh, begun completely. <coughs> but. Uh, who share a lot of, as you mentioned, share mm -hmm. a lot of classrooms. And when you're, when you're sharing multiple classrooms, I know last year, I forget the figure, but there were se dozens of teachers who shared multiple mm -hmm. classrooms and you just can't establish a home base, create the kind of atmosphere and Correct. environment that, that you really want to when you're, you know, this period here and then you're moving mm -hmm. upstairs or downstairs or down the hall to, to go to another classroom and try to create that same experience while a student's talking in your ear and, and you're busy mm -hmm. trying to, to make sure that you uh, can, can get set up. So that's a, uh, that's a challenge. Uh, Joe, you had, uh, when we were visiting classes uh, recently last week, you had mentioned uh, um, whereas overall class size in the Needham Public Schools, and Needham High School is, is in a good place. Uh, the community has been very supportive of, of providing uh, great teachers uh, and an administrative team to support those teachers and students. Uh, you made a comment about uh, uh, th these, aren't, uh, these aren't the little guys anymore. Right. right. <coughs> uh, to your point, uh, I could be the first to say how supportive the, the town has been from the school committee point of view and, and seeing how it, it all translates into the, uh, the work every day in the, in the school itself. But you're right, uh, walking through classrooms, um, when you hear that there are 26 students in a class, yeah, it's, it, that, that's large. You said 28. 
I happened to be in a, in a uh, junior social studies class last week, and these, as I described, and these are big kids, big human beings, and they're in You're rooms. Adults. That, they are. They're adults. We got 28 adults plus yeah. a teacher who was who was good sized also. Uh, it, there's no place to move. Uh, you can't get into groups. You have to stay. The, the desks have to stay as they are. Um, it, so numbers don't tell the the tale completely. I think it, it's actually the the visual that, that does a lot when you get a chance to walk through the room. Work goes on, kids pay attention, but it really is limiting on what the teacher is able to do and, and how much movement you can have in that classroom. Yeah. The, the immediate um, action step for the town is to, in November, uh, vote funds to expand the cafeteria. Uh, and, you know, at the end of the day, after a lot of discussion, we, we decided that, you know, we'll, we'll make steps there to, to provide space because we're over capacity um, and uh, we want to try to provide some good thoughtful flexible space and not just add you know square footage to sit down and, and eat a quick meal uh, although that will happen we're, we're, we're looking to provide some space we're working on those figures right now and and um, we're trying to uh, do some value-added engineering so that it can be a reasonable thoughtful cost for the for the community um, I heard, I, I, and anyone who can comment on it, I heard that there, there are some students actually who just will, will not go into the cafeteria uh, because of, um, you know, the it's big place, noisy place, not always a lot of room. Is that, is that something I, I made up? Are there, are there some students, Allie, that, that are concerned about that and anxious about that? Definitely, yes. We have a, a number of students who will grab their lunch and come and eat in the grade level office or or not even enter the cafeteria at all and kind of try to try to find somewhere to grab a quick granola bar in, in you know, one of the study areas in the hallway or something, um, which is obviously not what we want. I mean, we want students feeling comfortable and, and safe and, and socializing, really, which is all a part of what lunch is supposed to be about. It's supposed to be a little bit more relaxing, kind of a break to, um, you know, to be with friends and peers. So it does, it creates a challenge for for many students and it's you know at many large high schools have there are some students who might be a little anxious about a large setting or scene like that 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 can happen but in Needham High School it seems to be more and more students and quite frankly it's almost like running the gauntlet to to get into to get to lunch because it's tight and, and I know that's not, not the atmosphere that we want to support or, or condone or, or think is a, is a good thing um, so hopefully this action step that will happen later this fall to provide some construction funds will, will be part one of, of a project that uh, we'll look at to see if we might be able to either carve out additional space or provide some additional square footage to this building for, for all those programs you described. Um, it'll be a challenge because there are a lot of, there are a lot of needs in the community and uh, we're, we're, going to, we're going to work through that. But from my view, uh, it's clear to me um, and here's the reality. Needham High School um, was not built for this number of students. Um, we're we're, well, we're two, over 200 students over capacity. We, we need more space for core academic areas. Um, and uh, the, the community has to uh, work with us to, to reconcile how we want to, uh, you know, how do we want to approach that. Uh, we want to be thoughtful. Um, we want to be, you know, be a good steward of the community's limited resources. At the same time, we have an excellent high school program. It, it really, in many ways, is, is uh, you know, one of the most important, uh, uh, or is the most important aspect of, of the community. And so we have to address that and think about that and be thoughtful about if that. If I could just um, piggyback that, Dan, um, I, I think it, it needs to be said that the, the cafeteria staff, they do a terrific job in, in getting the kids their food, moving them through the lines. But there's no better indicator of how big a school this is and how the space needs really translate than to come to the cafeteria at lunchtime when you see 550 kids come in and sit, socialize, have their meal, leave, 550 more. We do that three times. Uh, it, it, it just a, it, it's a lot, of, a lot of students that we're trying to uh, provide the very best for. And that tells me every time I go there, this is, we, are, we are one very big school that needs to be sure we're conscious of the space needs. Right, truly. Really. So uh, those students who are coming in and out of the uh, cafeteria. So what, what's I'm curious to know what's on their minds this year. What's what's what do you hear from students that uh, 
uh, that they're worried about, they're excited about this year? What do you, what do you tell them um, in these first couple weeks of school that they want to know or are curious about or are fretting about? Um, what, have, what have you heard so far, Johnny, from uh, some I, of your students? I think uh, being, being the new guy on campus, they, they mostly just want to ask me questions, personal questions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? Check you out. Kick yeah, the tires. Yeah. 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 That's it's okay. Been, that's it's okay. So, so that's been fun for me because it gives me an opportunity to, to turn it back around and get to know them individually and, you know, ask them the same types of questions they're asking me, you know, where I'm from and my background is and, and all of that. So that's been that's been a lot of my cafeteria conversation so far. Good. Uh, I'll jump in, and this is. Uh, I've had more than one student say, um, "You know my grandfather, don't you?" You're a good, and I say, "Yes, uh, I, I do know your grandfather. Wonderful man." I uh, let's move on to something else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so I go back a ways here. Well, what else is that? What, what, are, uh, what are already students at Needham High School? Uh, you know, the volleyball girls volleyball team, I believe. I saw a tweet they won l last night in soccer. I mean, mm -hmm. they're into a lot of activities mm -hmm. already and uh, uh, doing doing uh, great things, including the uh, the young men and young women in the in the TV studio here. Uh, we're working with us mm -hmm. right now. Um, what are some of the things on on their minds? What are they What are they uh, talking about, or what are you hearing that? They're thinking about. I think so far there's been a lot of excitement about the start of school. I mean, I, you know, we're we're at the point still where it's new enough that the homework hasn't piled up too much, so it's easy to go home happy and not go home with a, a full backpack in quite the same way that'll come soon. Uh, so uh, really, everything I've heard from from all the students, even teachers and staff, it's it's been a very strong start. Um, we those of us who were here last spring, you know, really appreciate having Joe here, having Johnny here. Um, I don't think there's, you know, we all know there were some challenges that we faced as a school and, and as a town last spring, and I think the, the experience that those of us who are in this building are having right now, there's no indication of any of that. It's all just positive and looking forward. So, you know, we've had some great success on you know, the athletic fields, and the, the clubs already are off to a great start. We've got musical in the works, so I, we very much have a, a, a year as we would any other year, and I think the enthusiasm that comes along with that. It, it's a... It really is a pretty amazing place, and uh, you know one of the one of the sweet spots last week was the dedication of the Own Your Peace mm -hmm. sculpture in in front of um, in the uh, the um, Admiral Gracie Drive, mm -hmm. um, uh, facing the field. Uh, and I would encourage folks to come by and 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 walk through and, and take a look at the sculpture because it's really a powerful statement about uh, the belief uh, in our kids and and their resiliency and this mm -hmm. community strength and support of of its uh, of its students. So they're. There's a lot going on and, and uh, exciting things happening. You know, one of the one of the um, things that, that you mentioned, Johnny, and I just briefly, in case folks are hearing it for the first time, um, and, and maybe you can uh, give a headline or two about what it's all about. Uh, cultural proficiency is something that we're trying to attend to in all the Needham schools mm -hmm. and, and helping all our staff and our students mm -hmm. become more culturally aware and proficient. So what, what are we talking about, if I'm hearing this term for the first time? Um, so... Cultural proficiency is really about the ways in which we embrace diversity, welcome it, celebrate it. So moving beyond simply accepting and tolerating it and actually finding it as an asset for our school system. And, and it's one of the things that, as Ali was talking about, 21st century skills, you know, that we need to prepare our students for working in this global economy and, and, and a more connected world than it ever has been in the past. And, and finding ways to respectfully navigate cultural differences is, is a big part of that. And so that's, that's one of the big focuses of our work here. I, I, I've really been excited by the way that it touches almost everything that happens here in the school system. Uh, and it's, it's been exciting to see that work happening. And we, we have a lot of work to do in that area, and, right. and it's, it's a big focus, though. Yeah. Okay, good. Well, uh, that is helpful to... Uh, to hear. So uh, just a practical <coughs> matter. So how, how often do all of you meet? What does that look like? What if people wanted to know the inner workings of, uh, don't give away any secrets by the way, <laughs> uh, but how, how, how is your, how's the structure set up? There are other administrators as well, but how, how, are, how are things organized? Uh, well, first of all, I, I think it's, it's important to note that this, this is truly a team. Um, it, it's not uh, one person telling others or, or how it should be done. Um, I, I truly value the experience and the, um, the wisdom of, of uh, 
these three professionals. So we meet Monday morning, every, every Monday morning at 10 o'clock, uh, more often in a more informal fashion, but we have that time set aside. We map out issues around the building, students, teachers, um, what's coming up, who's going to take what. We have a faculty meeting coming up on Monday, and so we've mapped out a, a rather ambitious uh, agenda for that. Uh, we see each other in the cafeteria all the time. It, it, um, I, I think we, we mingle together on a regular basis. So we check in with each other to find out what's going on and, and who's doing what and that kind of thing. So uh, it's a good relationship. I, I find it extremely important to me, since the buck uh, will stop with me for the most part, uh, to have them checking in and uh, doing the good work that they do all the time. And then all of you are supported by their other administrators in the building, uh, the English department head and, and, and math and science and right. so on. And you meet with the cabinet uh, and together strategize and, and, and plan for the school. Right. So right. An, another, another layer to, to how you organize. I think it's that. fair to say that, that, that kids and teachers are well served by the administrative staff in place, the department heads, the directors. Um, there's a lot of oversight that, that really benefits the kids on a daily basis. And I think the team itself is a really strong one. I mean, oh, okay. you know, you're, you're seeing four and then the four who are kind of in building level positions, but everybody contributes to the building leadership who's in an administrative position and lots of people who aren't as well. But um, the chairs and directors are just incredible resources yeah. that we have, um, you know, to not only guide the work that's happening in departments, yeah. but also contribute to the overall leadership and, and to a lesser extent management of the building itself. So. And it's a really strong, collaborative, cohesive team. So it's, it's I think, a lot of fun to work with. Well, it, from, from the outside looking in, it is a powerful team. And um, <coughs> there are just a lot of great things happening. There will be challenges and things that come up that, you know, we'll have to, um, uh, we'll have to figure out. But I know that, uh, from, from my perspective, knowing that this is a, a strong team of, of the four of you, that when challenges do come up, I'm, I have every confidence that you'll you know respond and and uh, relate to those issues um, and address them in a way that that, that makes sense and uh, we'll, we'll get the job done. I you know um, my takeaways this morning there are many. I have like a jillion more questions to ask all of you. I want to talk about school safety because I know we're going to talk about school mm -hmm. safety and maybe try some. Uh, uh, some new procedures in all the schools this year and, and into next year, but we'll have to save that for another conversation. Um, and uh, I want to talk uh, a little bit more about cultural proficiency, but we'll save that for another conversation. My takeaways, though, this morning, um, this, the four of you uh, uh, really working with a talented staff and, and, and pretty amazing students who are thinking a lot about interdisciplinary learning and, and new opportunities for learning, including um, technology. There's another topic we have to talk about. Uh, for, for our kids and interdisciplinary learning and, and breaking down the silos and thinking creatively is, is something this faculty and, and staff are, are really uh, focused on and that's exciting. We have some challenges with space names. They're not going to go away immediately. I think the town is committed to doing something. Mm -hmm. We need to tell the story about those space needs and, and get them across so that we can gain that support from the community. And then I hear a lot about how we value students, and, and Johnny mentioning about cultural proficiency, students' differences, and our staff differences mm -hmm. as well, and, and what does that mean? And you said something, um, not just acknowledging that, yes, you're different, but valuing that, and um, not saying something like, oh, I, I don't see color, but I do see color, and mm -hmm. actually I embrace it, I'm excited about that, for example, is mm -hmm. one, one, uh, one mm -hmm. level. So uh, that's very exciting that this school is, is thinking about those three things and, and so many others as a new year begins. <coughs> Joe, thank you again for uh, stepping into this role. I wish you, uh, I wish you well as the year uh, uh, goes on and that you have a great year. And the same to you, Aaron and, and Allie. Uh, and Johnny, welcome to Needham High School and Needham Public Schools. Have a great year and thanks very much for the conversation. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.